Good morning. Welcome. This is Jennifer Richmond. This is Coffee Talk. This is our summer study, and we are in the book of James, and I'm really glad you're here. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome. Thank you for listening. If you're listening on Facebook Live, thank you for being here. If you're new to the podcast or the, or the Facebook Live, we just come together here every morning live at 7 a.m., and uh, get into the word. And this uh, next few weeks is going to be through the book of James. So grab your Bible. Make sure you have the study. Make sure you um, have downloaded that. You can just get it right online at uh, longrodachurch.com at the Women's Ministry Bible Study page. Glad to have you here. Good morning, my friend. Glad you are here. So we are going to get started here. And uh, you'll need, you need your Bible. Like I said, you'll need the study. Although you could probably do today's um, without the actual study pages. It'll help if you have them. Um, but go online and get those. You can even actually, if you don't have a printer at home, you can just open up the study as a PDF or on your Kindle. It's a nice thing to have that. And then uh, write your thoughts down, your responses down in um, like a journal on the side. So really glad to have you here. And don't forget to like and share the video. It really helps people get the word out and kind of remember, remind people that we're doing this. So let's pray and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the time in your word. What a great opportunity to be together, and not only with um, one another, but with you and uh, with your word. And as it um, ministers to our hearts today, we pray that we would have our, our mind changed in areas that need to be changed, our, our hearts softened, in areas that need to be softened and that just everything that we do and think are uh, would be oriented toward your will, your plans, your way, what you had to have us to um, to be like and to do. Thank you again for the power of your word today in Jesus name. Amen. All right, let's do this. So we are on page 32 of your study. If you're following along with the study, it seems like it should be page like three since it's the beginning of this study. But I'm just keeping an ongoing page count throughout the whole study. Mm. grab a sip of water there and uh, day two we're going to be going through James chapter one so if you were with us yesterday and did your study yesterday you know that what we're doing through this study is we're taking a big view and then we're bringing it a little closer and they're going to bring it a little bit closer today's kind of that middle step so yesterday we read through the entire book of James in one sitting all five chapters if you haven't had had the chance to do that yet take the time to do that today and before you move further into James, that's a key part of our Bible study is reading scripture as a whole and not just studying the word, but really delighting in the word, getting the word, enjoying the word, meditating on the word. And we see this all throughout scripture that that's our, should be our attitude toward God's word. And I know it is mine, so I hope it is yours as well. Today, we're going to be in James chapter 1. And we'll just dig right into that. So the first thing we want to do is read through James uh, chapter one. Before I do that, I want to make note of what I'm going to be asking you um, through the study questions here. And <clears throat> number one is how many imperative, which are command to do this or that thing. Remember in school, we had different types of sentences. We had a declarative sentence. That's a declaring of something, a statement of something. I'm going to the store, right? Then we have the interrogative sentence. That's a question sentence. Do you remember this from your third grade grammar lesson? Fifth grade, eighth grade, something? Interrogative, those are the questions. Am I going to the store? <laughs> and then we have imperative sentences. These are command sentences. Go to the store, right? That's telling somebody to do something or maybe telling yourself, Jennifer, go to the store today. Don't forget, I do have to go to the store actually. Get some dinner. Get food in the refrigerator so I can have dinner, right? So we're going to be reading through chapter one, and I'd like you to make note of all the imperatives as we read. Um, at least 12 of them are in there. The second thing we're going to make note of is um, highlighting and underlining mentions of trial, temptation, testing, and perseverance. So what I use um, is a highlighter. Mine looks like this. I'm going to show you my new one I just got. This is a really good one. It's called the Bible Dry Highlighter. Um, and I like it because it just clicks up and then I can push it back down if I need to. And it's not wet. It doesn't bleed through at all. And it, it's bright enough. The other highlighter I just got, which I'm enjoying, is this one. Look at that long one. And it twists up. It's just long and yellow. And this is called the Bible Dry Lighter. 
um, and Amazon, both of these. So just on Amazon, go search under uh, Bible highlighters. And then the third kind I like is this one. This is a gel highlighter and they are um, Bible safe. Again, they're not wet um, and they more like a gel that comes out. I like them, I like them all. Anyway, whichever highlighter you want, grab them, get ready. We're gonna highlight or underline mentions of trial. And then um, as we go through, we want to highlight each imperative in the Bible and write two of them. So we're going to make note of a couple of them. And then finally, of the command statements, which ones are pointing to the inner life, how we think and engage with ourselves and with God, and which ones are pointing to the outer life, how we think and engage toward others. And we're going to categorize them. So that's just an overview of where we're going. I'll get something off my computer there. <laughs> that's just an overview of where we're going in this study today. As we're reading through chapter one, be mindful of those things to look out for. Let's read the chapter and then let's go back and write those down. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion readings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, not lacking in anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exultation and the rich in his humiliation because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil and he tempts he himself tempts no one, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the, law, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. All right, let's dig in. So how many imperative or commands to do this or that, such a thing? How many of those types of statements can you find in chapter one? Anyone taking note as we were reading? On this particular answer, I made sure um, before I started today that I made a note of that um, and of course I wrote in your study for you that there's at least 12 maybe you found more or there's one that if you kind of split it up it could be I think two or maybe I did split it up and that's how I got to 12 anyway let's take a look number two count it all joy that's a command count it all joy what are we supposed to do count it all joy when you meet various trials and the next one in verse four let steadfastness have its full effect another command. It's an imperative. Let it have its full effect. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, a command. Number four, uh, verse six, but let him ask in faith, command. Number nine, 
let the lowly brother boast in his exultation. And then, although it's a compound sentence, you could list it twice. And the rich in his humiliation, you could split it apart or put it together. So lowly brothers boast in exultation, rich in his humiliation. Number 13, verse 13, I mean, um, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God. Um, verse 16, do not be deceived, my dear brothers. Number, uh, verse 19, know this, my beloved brothers, let every, and then secondly, this is one I think I might have split or didn't split, I'm not sure. But verse 19 has kind of like two, a command to know this certain thing, know this, what's going to come up my beloved brothers, and then next, let every person be quick to hear, so to speak. You get in the sense that James likes the words, let. <laughs> so, let steadfastness, let him ask of God, let the lowly brother, no, let no one say, and now let every person be quick to hear. On verse 21, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive. So, kind of a command, double command right there. So to put away filthiness and then command to receive with meekness. So a double there. And 22, verse 22, but be doers of the word. And then a double command again, and not hearers only. Okay. And then um, verse 27, visit orphans and widows in their affliction, double command, and keep oneself unstained from the world. Got it? So at least 12, right? And depending on how you broke up the compound commands, compound sentences, maybe 16. Okay, so jot that down. Now go back through and let's highlight or underline each mention of trial, temptation, testing, and perseverance. And if you haven't already, make sure that you've highlighted as you went the, um, the imperatives that you read also. So now let's go back through and each mention of trial, temptation, testing, and perseverance. So Right off the bat, verse two, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various, what? When you meet trials of various kinds. So mark that. For that you know the testing of your faith um, produces steadfastness. And you might have that also as perseverance in your translation. So any synonyms for those, you, you know, write those down as well. Um, Let's see, where's the next one? These I didn't pre-mark through my Bible as I was writing the study for you. So trial, temptation, testing, perseverance in this chapter. Mm -mm. Let's see. In verse 12, um, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Um, when he stood the test, he's going to receive the crown of life. Um, temptation, don't let anyone say that he's being tempted by God there in verse 13. For God cannot be tempted by evil. He himself tempts no one, but everyone who is tempted, um, he's by his own desire. He, we're going to dig into that in a couple of days on over on day four, by the way, just to alert you to that. <laughs> um, let's see. Skimming through verses 19 here. Um, verse 22, 24, and the law of liberty and perseveres in 25. And there we go. I think we, I think we got them all. All right. What is this? Again, with the hair today. <laughs> I've been up for a while. It's not even like I have bed head. It just looks funny on this video. Anyway, whatever. And I had a nice walk this morning, too. Lovely. Took a nice long walk. Relaxed. Come back home. And my hair. That's what I get. It's probably because I had it up in a ponytail. All right. Highlight each imperative in your Bible. Check. And write two of them here, either word for word or by paraphrasing it. So I wrote an example there for you. So verse 2. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. That's word for word of the ESV. And then in my own words, when all kinds of trials come my way, I need to be joyful. There you go. So take a moment, think that through, and jot down your, um, your, version, your version of that. I'll, I'll pause on the podcast to give the podcasters time to write that down. Facebook, sorry, can't pause you, so you get to look at nothing. You get to hear nothing for a minute while I'm writing my next verse down. You write yours down too, okay? All right, we'll be right back.
Okay. So I did verse five as my second one. Maybe you did as well. Go ahead and type it into the Facebook comments here. And um, uh, it, if you would like to write also on the podcast, you can write out on the comments what, what verse you wrote. But I did verse five. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach. And then I reworded that in times that I need wisdom, I should boldly ask God, uh, knowing, trusting that he will give it to me without scolding me. Or uh, the, the New International Version says it gives generously to all without finding fault. So sometimes it's helpful to go to a few other translations to get another sense of it. And, um, and then again, ramble that around in your brain to put it into your own thoughts. So number four, of these command statements, which ones are pointing to the inner life, how we think and engage with ourselves and God, and which ones are pointing to the outer life, how we think and engage toward others. So maybe you'll go back through your Bible, and now that you've highlighted or marked them, um, maybe you can put a the sign for God. Now, I've, I've taught this before, so I'll just show you again. But um, the Greek sign for God, I'm going to write it here, is a circle with a slash through it. You see that? It looks like the letter O with a line through it. That's the Greek letter theta, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, Greek alphabet, right? So the Greek letter theta is the first letter in the word theos, which is the word God. So if you're writing your notes, anytime that the word God comes up in the Bible or the concepts of God or relationship, relational connecting with God comes up in the Bible, a great way to mark that in your Bible is to just um, uh, put the theta right there. So Go back through your imperatives that you already highlighted in your scripture here and write down the theta for God. And then um, for others, maybe put an arrow. Okay, this is how you're going to engage outward to others. So whatever, however you want to do that. Maybe the theta for God and um, just a regular O for others. However you want to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to walk you through a couple and then let you roll on your own. So in terms of the command statements, which ones are we, how are we engaging with others and which ones are we directly engaging with God um, or ourselves? So number, uh, verse two, kind of all joy when you meet trials of various kinds. Okay, so is that a command that addresses our inner life or is that a command that addresses how we engage with the world? The effect will impact how we engage with the world, but that's a command about my inner life. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to count it all joy. So I'm going to mark it in my Bible with a theta, that that's toward God and myself, right? My inner life. And I'm going to put that right here, verse uh, two in my notes. Count it all joy. Count it joy in my notes. The next command is let steadfastness have its full effect. Again, is that in relationship to me personally and how I relate to God? And allow God to work in my life? Or is this something that's outward toward other people? Right. This is definitely my inner life. So we'll go ahead and mark that. Verse 4, let steadfastness have its full effect. Let steadfast have its effect. Write that down. And the next command is from verse 5. Let him ask God. Is that something I'm doing publicly? Right. So do you get the flow on that? I'm going to jump over to one that's for sure about how we're engaging in the outer life because I'm going to pause and give you time when we conclude our study to write the rest of these. That's right, Pam. I saw your comment there. Same for me. I need to remember to ask and be determined to not doubt, but wait for his direction. Amen. So um, the big one that's had in terms of our outer life is to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. A, a new international version says to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And the ESV says keep oneself from being unstained by the world or from the world. Um, so that's an outer relationship. But do you see the weight and sheer volume of the priority is on our inner life? You just by going through that and realizing the we have some outer life here also, but the weight of, of the bulk of a relationship is on our inner life. It's not that we're self-focused, it's that we're filtering ourselves through how God wants us to engage with him. 
right? And as a direct result then of, look at this hair that's tickling me here. Sorry about getting all distracted here. As a result of how we're engaging with God, it reorients our, reorients our thoughts and it should adjust our thinking on being religious, as James puts it. And the clear result is that we would be desirous of helping people in their distress, orphans and widows, as James writes here. Okay, so that's our conclusion of this lesson. Tomorrow we'll be back here on day three. And we did an overview of all of James on our first day. We did just James chapter one today. And then tomorrow we're going to start breaking down James uh, chapter one, verse by verse. Fun. Get you down word to word, letter to letter, and then tiny little periods. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Finish writing down your chart there, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Don't forget to share the video when we're done here and share the podcast and let people know that you're listening. And then also, just so you know, if you go on iTunes, you can find Dwelling Richly on iTunes. And if you give us a review on iTunes, it helps boost our, our rankings so people can find the podcast easier. And my goal is to get God's word out into people's ears and minds and hearts, right? And so if you'll help us by just going on to iTunes today and giving us a review, say, yay, yay for dwelling richly. <laughs> That'll help us. And I appreciate that. And thanks for sharing the podcast and thanks for sharing the, the Facebook as well. Both of those things help get the word out and help us to engage with people. Pray for people as they hear the word, that their eyes of their heart, as the word says, would be opened. And for yourself as well, that your eyes of your heart would be opened and you'd understand God's word better. That's what I want for myself also. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 7. And uh, God bless you. Bye-bye. If you're heading off to VBS, by the way, thank you for working at VBS today. Hopefully I'll see you over there later on. But bye now.